Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mrs. Scott. I've got a really exciting book that I would like to share with you today called, well, shall we read it together? My Strong Mind. And this story is all about using our growth mindset. What do I even mean by the word growth mindset? Does anyone know what that means? Lucia? It means you're using your mind. You are using your mind in what kind of way? Ava? Mind, mind gets stronger every time once you try That's right. By using your mind, you're exercising the muscle in your brain to improve it. Do we always get things right first time? No. Is it okay to make mistakes? Yes. Why is it okay? Put your hand up. Why is it okay to make mistakes? What do we know? Xavier. That's right. It helps us to get better. We can. What can we do from our mistakes? Something I'm thinking of, Zara. You learn from it. That's right. We can learn from our mistakes. And that's how we develop. We grow and we make progress. Freddie, you put your hand up. Um, we learn from mistakes and then um, our brain grows bigger. That's right, and each day when you get good quality sleep and eat the right nutrition and exercise our brains and use our growth mindset, our brain gets a little bit stronger every single day. So let me share this book with you. And this is a story about a little girl called Kate. And Kate is quite sporty and she's a very happy little girl. She enjoys coming to school and she has a wonderful supportive family. But sometimes Kate has challenges in her life. Sometimes things don't always go according to plan. So let's find out what happens in the story. So Kate is a happy and sporty little girl. She does well at school and has many, many friends. But like every girl, she faces difficult situations at home and sometimes even at school. Things don't always go as she likes. She is slow to get ready for school making her parents feeling quite grumpy with her at times. All of her friends can do cartwheels, but she cannot. She's afraid to stand in front of the class to do show and tell. Her friends sometimes say mean things. One day, Kate read a book about strong minds. She learned that everyone has their own brain and can make up their own mind. You can teach your mind to do whatever you want it to do. You can tackle any challenge with a positive attitude. When you practice, your mind gets smarter and stronger. And it is okay to try and fail because over time your mind can help you to get better at anything you want it to. So Kate decided to use her mind with all of her challenges. Now at the start of the story Kate found things a little bit challenging. Did Kate give up? Now, in Fox class, we don't say, we can't do this. We say, we can't do this yet. Because we're not ordinary foxes. We we're are fantastic foxes. And you are fantastic foxes because you know how to use your growth mindset. So when life is feeling a little bit tough and there are challenges that you have, what could we do? I'm looking at this at the moment. I'm thinking of a word to do with our growth mindset. I wonder if somebody could help me. Ava. Bounce back up. We could, we could bounce back. And it's got a very long word and it's called resilience. Listen to me first. Resilience. Could you say it please? Resilience. Resilience gives us the strategies and tools to bounce back when things may be a little bit tough. 
I wonder if any of you feel comfortable sharing with me something that you may have found challenging, something that you may have found difficult, something that may have made you feel a little bit anxious in your tummy or your stomach, just like Kate felt in the book. Zara? Um. It was really hard, but did you give up, Sarah? Yeah. What did you do? What did you use? My growth mindset. You used your growth mindset to continue. I'm so proud of you. Catherine. Um, well, today I was trying a new book on 7C, and it feels a bit hard, but I keep on trying. So you used your growth mindset. That's fantastic. And how does that make you feel now, Happy? Really happy. Do you know what it makes me feel? Really proud. It's filled my heart with pride. Yes, Ava? <gasps> you did. You worked really hard through the summer, didn't you? And what can you now do, Ava? And you can do them all by yourself. You showed great resilience. You found it challenging, but you didn't give up. Lucia. We like to get two levels. When I moved on to 9A, it was very scary because there were new books and harder things. And how did you deal with those feelings? I, I kept fighting them. You did, so you kept trying, you persevered. That makes me incredibly proud. So there's lots of things that we may find in life that makes us feel like we're being challenged. It might make us feel a little bit anxious. Freddie, your hand's just gone up. Oh, that makes me very proud. So you're using your growth mindset as well. I'm really proud. Now, sometimes we have these challenges, but it's about having a toolbox of techniques, some strategies to help us. And we've been doing some mindfulness, some breathing techniques. Now, I'm going to do a mindfulness practice with you, but I would like us to democratically vote for which one we're going to do. You have a choice of either doing finger breathing, or you're going to have a choice if you'd like to do the petal practice. And I'm going to democratically encourage you to vote. So, can I ask, if you would like to do the finger breathing, could you put your hand up now, please? So we have one, two, three, four, five. Is your hand up? Here you go. Six, seven, eight children that would like to do finger breathing. Thank you, put your hands down. If you would like to do the petal practice, could you put your hands up, please? So that's six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So that swayed the vote, actually, Freddie, to do the petal practice. Three, four, five, six, seven. So seven there, and hands down. And if you wanted to do the finger breathing, just because some people changed their mind, put your hand up again if you wanted to do the finger breathing. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to do the petal practice. Okay, why am I getting you to democratically vote? Why am I not making all the decisions? Why am I not doing that? Lucia? We do, and when you say we make the rules, what do we say really matters in our school? Ex Xavier? Your voice, what do we say? Your voice really matters. Your voice really matters, and you know you have a responsibility, but you have a right. You have the right to talk to an adult if you're worried. You have the right to feel valued at all times, to feel safe and to feel respected. And your voice does matter because you voted for our class charter. So today, we are going to use the petal practice in our mindful practice. Now I'm going to ask you to sit with your feet firmly on the ground. Why am I encouraging you to do this? Who can help me? Ava. It does make us comfortable, but it does something else to help us. Yes, Teddy? It makes us feel grounded. And when we feel grounded, remember that superhero pose, it also makes us feel... Good. And what's the other word I'm looking for? I wonder if anyone can remember. If we feel grounded, it helps us to feel a little bit... Oh, no, quite the opposite, but thank you for sharing that with me. Lucia? Uh, Tori. 
it helps us to feel stronger. So we're in a comfortable position, but we're also in a strong position. So our bottom's right at the back of the chairs and our feet flat on the floor. And that helps us to feel grounded. And today we're going to be doing a pedal practice. So could I please encourage you to put your hands in front of you like this. Now, you may want to do one hand at a time. You may want to do two hands at a time. I will leave it up to you to decide. I'm going to use just one hand. So, could I please encourage you to close your eyes. You want to close the door? Close your eyes. Imagine that bubble around you. This bubble is your place of safety. To begin with, I want you to just notice your breath. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathe in. Breathe out. As we enter this practice, I'd like to encourage you to have an open heart and an open mind. Just notice your breath. And out. Breathe in. And out. Now I'd like you to use your petal, your hands, to actually focus on your breathing. So when you're ready, let's close our petal, breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. I'd like you to continue to do that using your own pattern of your breath. Breathing in and breathing out. If you find that your mind wanders, and it often does, just bring your attention back to your breath. And if there's anything worrying you or anything you feel anxious about, take a big breath in, thinking of that worry and blowing that worry away as you exhale. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes, wiggle your fingers, and look this way. Now we've just done a mindful practice. Now I wonder, can you help me? How are you feeling at the moment? You've just done a mindful practice. How does that make you feel? Ava? Your soul feels nice. And what do you mean by that, Ava? That's wonderful. So my soul feels relaxed. Thank you for sharing that with me, Ava. How are you feeling, Isabel? You feel like you're in your own little bubble. And how does that bubble feel? Calm. So you're in a bubble and you feel nice and calm. Thank you for sharing that with me. Casper, you feel really relaxed. Thank you, relaxed. It sometimes makes you feel a little bit sleepy, and that's because your body may be relaxing for the first time. So thank you for sharing that. And that's an important thing to recognise, because sometimes it might mean that you need to take a break. It might mean that you need to get some fresh air or have a drink. Let's have a look. Zara, sitting really sensibly. You feel safe, that's wonderful. So mindfulness helps you to feel safe. Xavier. I, I feel relaxed and calm. 
you feel relaxed and you also feel calm. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yes, Hugo, you feel happy. So what a wonderful opportunity mindfulness can give us, a toolbox to help us feel a certain way. Freddie, I feel mindful. you feel very mindful. Thank you for sharing that with me. Mindful. Yes, Tori. So you feel respected. That's wonderful. And again, as part of our cl class charter, it's really important that you feel respected. Yes, Kathy. I feel I'm ready to do stuff. Oh, so you're feeling a little bit energised and you're ready for another lesson. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. And I'm going to take Lucia as the last answer. You feel valued. Thank you for sharing that with me, valued. So let's have a look. By doing a mindful practice, by using our growth mindset to aim high and be the best that we can be, helps us to feel that, well, for Ava, it fills our whole soul. It makes her feel good about herself. It makes her feel relaxed. Thank you for sharing that. It helps us to feel that when we're in our bubble, that we are calm and you know that you are in a safe environment. You feel relaxed, valued. You may feel a little bit sleepy and it's okay. It's important that you acknowledge that. You feel safe. You feel happy, you feel mindful, and you also feel respected. Thank you very much, Fox Class, for sitting there so sensibly. Could I ask you to just take a moment to put your arms and your hands in your lap in a strong position and just awaken your senses.